On this episode, we're going to be talking about a debatable topic of whether you should wrap electrical tape around your receptacle or outlet or your switches. So stay tuned. I'm Jay from Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So just a quick disclaimer, we are gonna be talking about electrical components today. Again, my electrical codes and your electrical codes might be different, so always make sure that you're always up to date with your current electrical codes and you have the proper permits. Make sure you turn off the power from your circuit breaker before working with any type of electrical. And if you're unsure, unconfident working with any type of electricity, please hire a qualified, certified electrician before doing the job. Again, before you go through this, my full disclaimer is in the description down below. Let's get into today's episode. Today's topic is a debatable one of whether we should wrap electrical tape around a receptacle or outlet or even this electrical switch before you insert it through a J-Box. I'm not saying one side is right or the other one is wrong. I'm just stating all the different opinions that I come across with. And make sure you watch the whole video because we're gonna be going over some interesting reasons why people wrap electrical tape around their outlet and why people just don't like it, period. And also stay tuned because I'll be sharing my own personal opinion on what I think about this topic. And I'll also show you how to wrap around this perfectly by two methods. Let's first go over the reason why people wrap electrical tape around their outlet and that is because of common practice. I know I might have some professionals or seasoned electricians that are watching me right now and watching this video. Feel free to chime in in the comments and please share your knowledge with us of your what you do. The whole community would love to know. Most of the electricians that I've come across by would say that they would wrap around their electrical outlet just for good common practice. But again, some also say they don't do it because it's just very uh, troublesome. Another reason why people wrap electrical tape around their outlet or switches is because of the presence of a bare wire. There's a possibility that people are saying that this bare, bare ground wire could touch one of the hot terminals on this outlet right here. At residentials, you have these um, terminals that are sticking out right there. There's a possibility that the ground wire could be touching one of these open terminals you're supposed to go all the way and screw these in but sometimes they're not fully screwed in and create a short a spark or an arc another very common reason why people tape around the outlet is because they are using metal boxes a lot of people are saying whenever you use electrical boxes or metal boxes like these compared to a plastic one you should always wrap around it. There's a possible chance that during the build of the home, um, the box could get uh, hit by something and they accidentally hit the box and they dent it and this could cave in and possibly touch one of the wires or the terminals and that could create a short or spark as well. Another reason is because your outlet or your, let's say for this GFCI receptacle, it is too small for the J box. Sometimes these J boxes are just so small, and uh, some people, you know, you never, per you know, we're never perfect, right? We try to make things work, and we fit this in here where it's just like super cramped in there. Given this is a small one gang, and you have this huge GFCI, you're trying to fit in here with all the with all the wires, and with all that stuff all cramped up in that one space there is definitely a chance that you could have one of the wires be touching this box or touching the terminals on this outlet could create a short or a spark speaking of overcrowding that brings up to another reason is because if i show you this right here maybe you're trying to put two gfcis on two on a two gang j box you notice how very close they are together there's a there's a very small um gap right there between the two GFCIs. I know these two types are back wire styles, but what if they are the terminals, the screw-in terminals just like this? It's pretty much close to touching. If you add the wires there together, um, again, that is really coming close to each other. It's just some, you know, a problem waiting to happen. So you're looking out for your own personal safety, and even though it's not written in the NEC and it doesn't say you can't do it, if it's for the NEC um, requirements, that's just for the minimum. I mean, if you're going over above and beyond, especially for your safety, you want to go above and beyond because you're on, not only protecting yourself or your loved ones, but you're also protecting your home as well. So 
why not go the extra step and just wrap around it another reason is because again well we're going to talk about overcrowding there is a lot of wires going on here and a lot of people this is going to be another video topic as well friends is how much wires can you fit on the j box a lot of people overstuff their j box with so many wires um, they're unaware of how many wires that should be allowed per one gang two gang or three gang um, j boxes that's why i'm going to cover that topic in a future video but overcrowding the j box you have all these wires connected these these outlets these switches and, and especially you know there's a possibility that one of those wires could possibly touch the terminals and could cause a spark that pretty much brings us to another reason and that is the cleanliness of how you orientate the wires some people's work are different from others i mean we're all human we all make mistakes we're not perfect but that's also another reason why you should wrap around the, the outlet is because these wires sometimes are not orientated the best way in there and they're all jumbled up and pushed in you know you're probably having a bad day and you just want to get the job done you put all the you put the electrical outlet in there and you just stuff you just push this you just push the switch all the way in there with all that jumbled wire with that kind of you know mindset maybe it's best to just wrap around you know wrap around there with electrical tape just so that we can be safe in case that situation does arise there's another very interesting reason that i came across and i hope the diyers are, that are doing this at home aren't, aren't doing aren't, aren't practicing this unless you're a professional you've been doing this for years so you're a certified electrician and everything like that and that is because you're working on the outlet and switches that are energized so the reason for that some electricians are saying they work on energized electrical outlets or switches is because sometimes the power that are going inside the, the j boxes come from different sources given you might kill the power from one from the main breaker but there's also other breakers that are feeding on the same j box so correct me if i'm wrong and if that's true or not but in this case that kind of does make sense this is the voltage detector i use all the time i'll leave similar product like this on the description down below if you need one of these but they're just looking out for the next guy that's going to be working behind them to get in here and it possibly you know prevent them from getting shocked so that just comes across very chilling to me but at the same time it does make sense there are circumstances where you can't turn off the power from the circuit breaker let's just say maybe you are working on a, on a hospital or you're working in some sort of business where you know it's very hard to trace where that power is coming from and that's why all the professionals come in and do that hats off to all my electricians out there you guys are doing awesome and i mean this is a very dangerous job another great reason why people do that is you know to wrap around here is just to look out for you know i have a i have a son a two-year-old son and he's in this stage right now where he's always you know touching everything what you know what if a cover plate comes in loose i know my son likes to pry on things you know i'm pretty sure some of you can relate my son is in the point right now where he's trying to pry off um, many things and one of them is could possibly you know i hope he doesn't do it is to pry off the cover plate on an electrical outlet or or maybe he can't reach a switch because he's only what like how 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 many inches tall but on the outlets there's a possibility that he could pry that off and you know get his hands on one of these terminals and there could possibly cause an electric shock and hopefully that doesn't happen to any of you friends so if you have any plates out there make sure you double check that it's not loose so if you get children's hands between those plates there's a possibility you know they could touch one of those terminals and get shocked or if they even stick an object in there i could see why electrical tape around the outlet is a very good idea so here's another scenario maybe you're painting the wall your walls right now i know a good painting job you always want to take off the cover plate off your receptacles and your switches so what if for instance you forget one of those things hopefully that doesn't happen you forget to put it back you know you're letting the paint dry around that area before you put that that plate on and you know your little one or possibly my little one could get in there and t probably touch it hopefully you know you guys are protecting that area while you guys are painting and letting it dry so all in all i kind of gave out my position on my opinion on this of whether you should wrap around it or not 
And for me, my personal take on it, I definitely 100% um, prefer wrapping around the electrical outlets because, uh, you know, safety is always number one. You can never go wrong with going above and beyond on safety. Okay, so now that we talked about all the pros and the good side of why we should wrap around the electrical outlet, let's now talk about the bad side. Why some people just, you know, just hate it, don't do it. It's just a waste of time. And one of the reasons that I came across is it's not on the NEC. Again, it's not written on the NEC code, so why do it, right? I did check it on the uh, National Electric Code 2020. I do have that book and I looked through it and I didn't find it. So if you did find it and it's not written there, let me know in the comment section down below if you found it or if you didn't find it. I want to make sure because I personally didn't find it. And yeah, I can kind of see why people don't want to do it because again, it's just extra work and it's not written in the NEC. The other reason that I came across is it makes inspection like a dread. It's impossible, you know. You have inspectors that will approve it and some will not approve it. Again, this also is a debatable topic. It all depends on your local codes, on wh wherever you're located in the world. I don't know where you're located, but some are saying their inspectors just don't like it. You have the inspectors come in and they pop off the, you know, the cover plate and they see all that covered up terminals. They can't see what's going on in the terminals if the connections are correct. And I kind of, kind of see where they're coming from on there. But again, some in inspectors might approve it. Some inspectors might fail it. So again it all depends on the inspector another reason is the tape will degrade over time so given you're using electrical tape like this some people will wrap it around so tightly you know when you this is stretchable um this is actually the super 33 plus and it is the electrical tape it's black and it is very stretchy i don't know if you've used one of these before but when you pull it it does stretch and i kind of see it where some people when they do wrap around the electrical outlet um, they they stretch it and over time that thing will pull out and it will start to unravel or unstick and eventually you know you now you have a piece of a burnable in there that is just flapping and just laying in there it could possibly cause you know another another burnable to something to catch on fire if it does spark so i kind of see that point and another one is that it leaves this stuff will leave residue around the terminals over time and yeah i see where they're coming from on that one so friends i hope i didn't bore you with all that talking let me know if i missed anything whether it be pros or cons i would really want to know your opinion on this and if some of the reasons that i stated are you, you know you do agree leave it in the comment section down below I want to know, you know, your guys' take on this and what you think and what whether you do it or you don't do it. And let me know in the comment section below. We'll start a good discussion on this one. So here's a simple outlet right here. This is a commercial grade outlet. See how nice and beefy this looks. And it is a back wire. So it's kind of like the same concept if you have just the residential with the, the screw in terminals right here. Make sure that before you do this, you tighten each and every one of these terminals all the way down the scotch super 33 plus all right so that's what I, I recommend if you have any other products that you recommend leave it in the comment section down below and um yeah but this one this product here along with the voltage detector and any other stuff that you see here i'll leave it in the description down below if you want to purchase this stuff that I'm presenting to you right now. Overall, the simplest way to do this, which is method number one, is just taking your uh, you know, electrical tape and just wrapping the terminals. Again, take your time, don't stretch this. So once when you pull it out of the roll, you don't wanna pull it and then stretch it and go like that. You see how stretched that looks? You wanna go about it with very minimal stretch and just with ease okay so notice how there's little stress marks right there being that you don't wrap around this screw right here these two screws i always sometimes get that in the way and right when i finished wrapping it, i was like oh man i just wrapped around that so make sure you pulled put this out of the way or just take it out and then wrap around there but again just two wraps should be fine you know that's one right here when you reach to the that point you know that's one wrap and then you wrap it again you know two 
and you should be good okay and then just cut it like that so you're not done yet I highly suggest that you put doggy ears on these gentlemen's collar buddy tab whatever you want to call it um, but just leaving a good tab right here gentlemen's collar I like to use buddy buddy tab right here you're just looking out for the next guy that's gonna come and you know do this job and yeah they will greatly appreciate if you leave this buddy tab right here method number two is pretty much wrapping two separate wraps okay so we're gonna go around it one okay without stretching do that you want to make it nice and relaxed so that's just one wrap okay one wrap and probably a little bit over i'm gonna leave a little buddy tab right here i'm gonna go and wrap it again one more time if one un does unravel over time the other one will eventually you know it won't continue on throughout the whole roll that's kind of like sewing when you're sewing something you don't want to keep sewing the stitch all the way around where you're sewing you want to leave a break in case one of the stitches breaks it doesn't unravel the whole stitch this is kind of like the same concept where you're just you know wrapping around if one of them fails the other one will eventually you know won't go in the same same time when the other when the first layer of defense fails so hopefully friends if you stuck around and watched this whole video i thank you so much from the bottom of my heart we are coming to 100,000 subscribers pretty soon and i thank you each and every one of you for all the love and support this means so much to me friends i know i've been only doing this for less than two years now um, we're about a, a year and a half i know i've made an account earlier but i've never gotten really serious on this till a year and a half ago and i didn't know it was going to reach too much you know this much people that are interested in the channel for those of you guys who continue to comment my regulars um i thank you each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart for all the love and support and if you found this video helpful please hit that big thumbs up press the subscribe and notification bell i will be doing a 100,000 subscriber giveaway once we get to that mark so stay tuned for that and that with that being said thank you so much i'll see you in the next video friends